Hello, my name is Brad and I'm going to be demonstrating how to use Lightorama and Madrix to create amazing effects on SnowVision RGB snow tubes with practically no sequencing. Because SnowVision tubes use DMX, they can be sequenced and controlled directly from LOR with IDMX 1000. Unfortunately, since each snow tube has 48 channels, it could become very cumbersome and time consuming to try and program that many channels. Imagine, just 10 tubes is 480 channels you'd have to keep track of. This is why SnowVision Pro starter packs ship with Madrix. Madrix allows you to create very elaborate effects that can be called up from Lightorama with a single DMX channel. Very complex effects like live EQs and scrolling text are literally two clicks in Madrix. The screen in front of you is the main control screen for Madrix. In order for Snow Vision tubes and Lightorama to be able to communicate with Madrix, we need to do some simple configurations. The first thing we need to do is define how many snow tubes we have and the number of pixels in each. To do this, go to the Preference menu and select Matrix Generator. Most of the default settings will remain the same. To set up the number of tubes and pixels, we need to go down to X count and enter the number of snow tubes we have. For this demonstration, we're going to enter 10. The Y count is the number of pixels in each tube. Snow Vision has 16 pixels in each tube. Leave the start corner as top left, but change the main orientation to vertical. You'll notice that the chart on the side changes. We have configured everything we need to in this box, so click OK. Our grid now changes to show 10 snow tubes with 16 pixels each. This grid is a real-time representation of the snow vision tubes. Next, we need to set up our DMX in and out communications. Once again, we're going to go back to the Preference menu and this time select Device Manager. You'll notice that I have two DMX controllers hooked up. One is for the input commands from LOR, and the other one is the output to the Snow Vision tubes. The controller that is hooked up to the IDMX 1000 needs to be the input. Select it from the list, and then change the setting from output to input, and click Apply. Next, click on the DMX Input tab, click Enable, and then select the controller. Next, click Enable under Remote Control and set the input protocol to DMX in small. The last step is to click Enable under Mapping and then click OK. Now that we have our grid size and communication set up, we need to save it. To do this, go to the File menu and select Save Setup As and give it a name. I'm going to use 10 tubes and then save the file. Now let's start building some effects. You'll notice a series of numbers below the grid. These are effects bins. These are the bins where we'll build our effects and call them up from LOR. Right now, bin 1 is highlighted. You should always leave this bin empty as it is the default location for Madrix when it is no longer receiving a DMX value. So for our first effect, we're going to select bin 2. Let's start with something simple like scrolling color. Begin by going to the effects list. In this list are all the basic effects elements you will build upon. There are three categories. SCE which stands for Static Color Effects. These are pure color effects, displaying of video and bitmaps. S2L, which stands for Sound to Light Effects. These effects require an audio input signal. As a result, you'll get all kinds of amazing effects that are synchronized to the music and will automatically be generated for you. M2L stands for Music to Light. These are similar to the sound to light effects, but incorporate advanced analytical methods to analyze music for heights of tones, volumes, intervals, keys, and tonal changes. 
They are very accurate effects and are created live. For our first effect, we're going to select Color Scroll. Now that we have a color scroll, we can change the effect to meet our needs. For example, we can change directions, We can also create different types of effects, like horizontal imploding, rectangular implodes, circular implodes, and also exploding. The speed of the scroll is set by the BPM slider. Adjust as needed. If you're unsure of your BPM speed, you can use the tap button to judge the speed of your music. Simply tap it every time you hear a beat. And Madrix will automatically adjust the BPM setting to that beat. For now we're going to leave this effect as it is and copy it into another bin and build upon it. To copy an effect, right click the bin and select copy and then paste it to the new bin. Now we're going to create a layered effect. This is when you combine two or more effects into one. To do this, click the Layer button and then select New. I'm going to select Drops from the Effects menu here. And now we have white drops on top of the color scroll. But let's change the layer order. To do this, I'm going to click the arrow on the Drops button to move it to the bottom. Then I'm going to click on Color Scroll and Link and this will combine the two effects together to give a really cool color falling rain effect. Now if you find that this is a little too busy you can actually lighten it up by going to Drops and then under Count just simply lowering the number to let's say about 3 and it won't be as busy anymore. Next we're going to create a very cool plasma effect. So to do this I'm going to once again select a new bin number and then I'm going to go under our effects and then select plasma. And with one click we've created a really cool plasma effect. Imagine trying to do this manually. It would just be an absolute nightmare. But yet in Madrix once again, this is a single click to create this effect. The plasma's cool, but let's add another layer to this. So I'm going to go Layer, New once again, and we're going to add some scrolling text. To do this, we go to the Effects menu, and we go to Ticker Scrolling Text. And you'll notice we instantly have text on top of the plasma. Now, this is a cool effect, but I'm not really particularly fond of the font that's being used in this as a default. So what we're going to do is we're going to click on the font button and we're going to change it. I'm going to go to Arial, then select Bold, and 12 is a really good size for this and click OK. Now we have a much bigger font, it's a little bit cleaner text, but it's a little off-center. To correct this, I'm going to put in a value of negative 1 and it will center it up for us. You can also change the text to be anything that you want. So right now it's saying Madrix, but I'm going to change that to Tune to FM 88.1. And that quick, it just changed the text that's in the scroll. Next we're going to create some sound to light effects. I'm going to once again select a new bin, and this time I'm going to select S to L Equalizer. Notice that nothing happened, but as soon as I start up some music, you'll notice it comes alive. This is the really cool thing about the sound to light effects, is that these are live. So you can create all of these different sound to lights. For instance, if we don't want an equalizer, maybe we want a waveform, all we have to do is just go down, we'll go to wave graph, and notice it instantly changes. Or, how about this one? We'll go to waveform, and now we have a scrolling waveform. Now that you have seen how easy Magic is, I'm going to show you how LOR can control it. I'm going to bring up the LOR window on top of Madrix 
so that you can see how they interact with each other. All I've done at this point is I've come in, I've created a new animation sequence uh, just to make it simple and with a single channel. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on this button right here and I'm going to give it a name like DMX. Make sure that your device type is set to Lightorama and our unit we need to set to E0. This is the default for the IDMX 1000 and we're going to leave it at circuit 1. Circuit 1 represents channel 1 which is what we told the Magic software was going to be our start position. So I'm going to click OK. Now that we've created a DMX channel, all we have to do is tell LOR what Madrix bin number we want at what time. To do this, click the DMX button to review the intensity selector. In the selector, set the DMX value that corresponds with the bin number. If you refer to the Snowvision configuration guide, I have listed all of the DMX bin number values for you. For now, I'll add some to the timeline. Once you have placed all the desired effects on the timeline, click the play button. You'll notice that Madrix is now automatically switching from one effect to the next based on the DMX value that you gave in LOR. I hope this demonstration has been helpful. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact our sales department. Thank you for watching and I hope you've enjoyed.